Okay, is this working? Well, thank you. Thank you to the Ad Club. Thank you to Google for being such generous hosts. I want to thank my fellow, a small band of Athenistas who are here. Uh, but most importantly, thank the rest of you, uh, because unlike those Athenistas, uh, you had a choice. Uh, <laughs> Um, so I am uh, Athena Health's Chief Marketing Officer. Uh, I've been at Athena about seven years now. Uh, and over that time, I've been struck by how everybody in my industry just sounds and looks the same. You know, It's probably because the industry is so regulated. Right? We've had recent government programs that sort of mandated what a doctor needed to use and have inside of their office. Uh, it's probably a little bit to do with just healthcare has a built-in mission. Right? Everybody goes to work every day to cure patients, to make patients healthier. Um, so today I'm going to talk about a couple of things, right? So first, just the current state of the healthcare landscape. Two, what we're doing at Athena Health to try to transform and make healthcare better. Uh, and three, how we're using our network to try to separate from everybody else, to separate from the pack. So for those of you who don't know, Athena Health is located right here in Watertown, Massachusetts. We've been around, uh, it's been in existence about 20 years, but it actually started as a birthing clinic uh, in San Diego. And the basic business model was to actually, um, to try to use midwives and nurses to care for new mothers at a lower price point than traditional models. And we were gonna share those savings with the payers. And it actually worked quite well for, for a little bit of time uh, until we just couldn't get paid. We couldn't get paid fast enough to keep the cash to pay for the nurses and to keep the practices open. So one of our co-founders, Ed Park, built a small little website so, so folks in the front office could enter in the patient information, they could enter into the insurance information. At night it would go and it would crawl and it would go to the websites of the different payers, try to figure out the different rules, process the claims uh, to get the cash. And it worked so well that eventually we ditched the clinics and just focused on uh, the, pre the, the, the business services of running, the administrative work of running a practice. And that's how Athena was born. That first sort of website is what today we call AthenaNet. AthenaNet, it, what's important to understand about Athena is that we are a cloud-based business service. We do not sell software. Everybody else in our industry sells on-premise legacy software. Doctor or health system pays for it up front, they put it on a server, if used properly, they'll be able to do things like process claims or see patients. We're very similar to Salesforce. It's a single instance of software in the cloud. Every doctor, every provider, every nurse logs on to the same instance of software, and we use, and we can see performance. We use the network, we use the knowledge and the scale that a single network provides to be able to deliver business services at scale that no one else can do. And for that, we're paid a percentage of collections. Right? So nothing up front, percentage of collections as we process claims. If you think about it, it's sort of similar to Amazon, right? So you can go on to Amazon, you can search and you can, you, know, you can find anything you want, you can enter books that you like, Amazon will surface up other books you may like based upon various algorithms that they've done. But if you go to somewhere else to buy the book, Amazon doesn't make any money. When Amazon makes money is when you actually order the book and they deliver the result, just like Athena. We don't get paid anything until we do something for the doctor. And that's a very different business model that I'll come back to later. Our mission is to be healthcare providers' most trusted business service, helping them do well by doing the right thing. Our vision, it's been the same vision for 20 years, and I'm gonna talk about this a little bit later, uh, is to build the, the information backbone, really the network, if you will, that helps healthcare providers work as it should. And right now, I'm gonna tell you, healthcare is not working as it should. So let's talk a little bit about healthcare and I'm gonna talk about sort of our brand vision and how we're pivoting as a company to react to what we're seeing today. So let's start with the cost of healthcare. The US spends more on healthcare than Canada does on everything. In fact, it's not even close. We spend twice as much. So you'd think, got a lot of healthy people, right? No. For all those dollars, our quality is on par with Costa Rica. The life expectancy of the United States of America today is 76 years for males, 81 years for females. In Costa Rica, it's 76 and 80. So where are all those dollars going? 
And the system is only going to continue to get taxed moving forward. Every single week, 75,000 new people sign up for Medicare. It's basically this enough to fill an entire football stadium. In fact, this surge in Medicare enrollment is expected to double the number of enrollees in the next 20 years. So it's no surprise that we're on pace to basically bankrupt the United States of America. So what you'll see here on the left is you've got your GDP, you've got your three, three big entitlement programs, Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security. And what you'll see by the year 2045, the, just those three, so not building roads, not educating our children, not defending the country, those three entitlement programs will start to exceed the total tax revenue that we have as a country. And it's not like we can borrow any more money. Okay? So, so our debt to GDP ratio in the recent years has surpassed 100%, meaning we have more debt than the total GDP that we produce as a country in one year. So something has to change. We cannot continue to sort of move like this. I think Greece's GDP was about 165% when sort of everybody started panicking that they were going to go broke. So like every great society, we came up with our five-year plan. I believe China is on their 13th plan. And our vision of the five-year plan was called the High Tech Act. It was part of the Recovery Act of 2009. And what the High Tech Act mandated was that each doctor was going to get on to a certified, government certified, EMR, electronic medical record, or health record. And the idea was that if you get everybody on a health record, entering in the information, that doctors could start to exchange information, we would reduce duplicative services, duplicative tests, right? We would know more about the patient so we could make better decisions, that folks would get healthier, and we would spend less. And we really, and as a country, we went all in. Spent $36 billion in stimulus. I think my, 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 our CEO has called it the cash for clunkers program. Um, and we basically said, told every doctor that we will give you $40,000 if you get on an EHR by this date. And if you don't, we're actually going to start to penalize you. So doctors were highly, highly incentivized to get on an EHR. So let's see how it worked. Well, first, you had huge billions of dollars of new stimulus. And anytime you flood in a market with new money, you're going to see tons of in new, new entrants. So we saw a number of new vendors come in. But I want to note that the vast majority of these were not building the clouds, the networks, the platforms of the future. What they were building was standalone pieces of software exactly to spec of the United States government. Government said, you need to be able to do these 16 things. And everybody built code, and they built it, and they shipped it. Everybody went to market sounding the same. This is HIMSS. This is, this is the, uh, if you ever want to go to a conference where literally everybody looks and sounds the same, both from the vendors to the people who show up, go to HIMSS in Florida, a city where everything looks the same. Um, 40,000 people, everybody goes, everybody talks about outcomes, everybody talks about data, integration. No one does it. But the incentives worked. Amazing. When you pay people, they'll do something. Um, from 2011 to 2015, you'll see EHR adoption went from 18% up to 87%. Massive adoption across the industry. Health IT and service companies flourished. We at Athena Health saw our 30, you know, you'll see our, our, our 10 year revenue CAGR grew by 30%. I joined Athena back in, uh, let's see, 2010. We did 246 million of revenue. Uh, this year, I think our public guidance is about 1.25, 1.3 billion. But it wasn't just us, right? Epic, Epic's a private company, but. Um, all Scripps Cerner, both had 17%. So we got everybody on an EHR. People are making money. 
But what about the patients and the doctors? Well, unfortunately, healthcare still looks like this in many places, right? You show up to the doctor. You're most likely going to be asked to fill out a form on a clipboard. Questions that you've been asked a million times that you've already told this doctor. If you get sent to a specialist, you're actually handed another clipboard with the same questions, and he or she has no reason why you're there, even though you were sent by a doctor that's supposed to be, be their partner. It's like we built millions of new cars, but there's still no roads. Because unlike other industries where platforms and network are used to exchange data, we've got doctors' office and healthcare systems littered with on-premise software that now needs to be connected. Oops. Furthermore, the experience just stinks for doctors. Today they are spending 40% of their time, 4-0, on just administrative work. We have w horror stories about doctors who go home at night, they turn on, pour a glass of wine and watch their rerun of House so they can just enter in the, <laughs> the data that the, 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 what happened to Susie today and what was going on with that wart. Um, and even part of the 60% time that they're seeing patients, much of that is being eaten up, having to enter in data. What's even more amazing is we've seen an actual 3,000% increase in the total amount number of administrative staff since the 1970s. So you've got doctors spending their time, all these administrators, and all of this information that's being connected isn't even being shared. You're being handed a clipboard when you walk into the doctor's office. So it's no wonder that today, 59% of doctors said they wouldn't even recommend their profession to their own children. And the cost of healthcare is at an all-time high. It gets positive from here, I promise you. <laughs> That's healthcare. In many ways, it's great because there's work and jobs for us to do. So obviously, we at Athena Health believe there, is a, there needs to be a different approach. First and foremost, healthcare needs to be transformed. Both doctors and patients need and deserve a better experience. We have to bend the cost curve as a company. My job as CMO at Athena Health is to show that all this, this on-premise disconnected software is part of the problem. That what healthcare needs is someone to integrate all the various players and connect the care continuum. We at Athena Health believe that we can be the road. And by doing this, we will create demand for our core services, fix this broken healthcare system, and truly separate ourselves from, all, from the pack. And this idea of being the connector for Athena is, is not a new one. You know, I talked about this um, I talked about our vision earlier. You know, and after 20 years, we're making great, great progress against becoming this information backbone. Today, we have one in 10 of you, whether you know it or not, were seen by a doctor on our network. We have figured out two million ways a claim can get denied in the country. Every time a claim gets denied, we look, we figure out why. Because we don't have on-premise software, we write a rule, that night it's updated, and no one else, none of those doctors get that claim denied in the country. Anybody on our network can exchange information with another doctor on that network, so there are no clipboards. We're actively working to open up doctor schedules. So if you go see your primary care doc, and your primary care doc wants you to see a specialist, a cardiologist, he doesn't hand you a index card, a business card, and say, go see Dr. Sue. He has no idea whether you did it or not. So at Athena, we're actively working to connect everybody, to build the largest national network in the country. And this national network positions us to be healthcare's first true platform. And do for healthcare what Amazon did for retail, what Uber did for transportation, 
and really what Airbnb did for accommodation. So let's talk a little bit about what I mean by platform companies. Platform companies do two and eight things. First, they connect manufacturers to consumers. And, and two, they welcome new entrants to increase innovation. And they, they increase innovation by creating two-sided markets that allow for consumers and other companies to contribute and participate in the pace of innovation. Sort of the graphic on the right. Let me give you an example. Bloomberg today produces content. They have customers, they take that content, they push it out. And for that content, they're paid a fee. Now let's look at YouTube. YouTube has a network. It's a platform for consumers and creators to go on and contribute to the content. It's, it's an open, two-sided uh, uh, network. Um, and, and if you look, the vast majority of the content on YouTube is not YouTube. It's all these other individuals. They have, they have contributed. They have made their own videos and added. And today, YouTube has 400 hours of video uploaded every minute by different creators and supplies over a billion hours of content. They couldn't do that on their own. But by welcoming others and allowing them not just to sort of consume what they were producing, they offered them, they asked them to help contribute. And if you look, platform companies are, dr are driving the vast majority of shareholder value across the country, for, for most companies. Uh, this is shareholder value per employee. You see uh, Amazon, 50, Amazon clearly beats Walmart, Google, Netflix. They do this because they're using network effects and they're welcoming others on to, to, to outpace sort of the, the, the innovation of traditional sort of linear companies. So by connecting others onto our current network and inviting them to participate by sharing information and building their own apps, we believe we can create our own category in healthcare. And that's critical because we are now selling into a replacement market. Right? You go back to that EHR adoption slide. You know, when I joined, government was coming in and paying folks. No one had what they needed. Everybody was in market. We used to call this term, you know, in market and interested. All our sales guys, oh, that person's in market and interested. Right? Today, everybody has bought something. Right? 98% have recently bought something. And this, 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 this EHR and rev cycle of on-premise software, this is like a heart and lung transplant for many of these people. Right, this is hard. So we desperately need at Athena, the, A, the country needs it, but we need to create this new category if we're going to continue to try to grow at the pace that we've sort of set, our, set for ourselves. Um, but creating new, new, new categories in marketing is, is, you know, there's dangers, there's pitfalls, it's, it's difficult. Um, and we debated how hard, how quickly should we push ourselves? And how much, how quickly should we go to market with this new category? Um, until, until eventually one idea, uh, one of our senior leaders said, hey, listen, we just may need to be the dancing guy for a little bit. And this idea of the dancing guy really became a rallying cry to try to get people comfortable with getting them to understand that our business model was going to evolve from just being a services company to a platform company. So who is this dancing guy, you're asking yourself? So business lesson. Leadership lessons from the dancing guy. So here he is. This man, we, we think at Athena Health, we can, he could be this dancing guy. See this guy? He really believes he's got something different. It's special. It's important. He's got the guts to stand there. He looks ridiculous. But he keeps kind of rocking it, right? He's out there. He's letting it fly. He knows. Uh, uh, hold on. The first follower. This dude, this, 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 the original shirtless guy embraces him as his equal. <laughs> this is how you feel to step out and start something new. He's got a partner. And let's just take a moment to look at how <laughs> gutsy it was for this guy to get out there in the green shirt, right? He had to be the first follower. You know, you can stand there, you can look ridiculous. Now, this goes on for a long time. And you have to be comfortable with the discomfort. 
And you've just got to believe that what you have, oh, hold on a second. The second, this, guys, this is the turning point. You get the second follower. This is proof that we have something getting started. Oh, well, oh, now, now, now it all good. Three is a crowd. They all start joining, right? Now you've got, oh, and then there's girls. <laughs> Once you get the girls, it's over. The competition is crushed. They're coming in droves. You've won. So you get the joke. So we want it. You just got to be comfortable. You have to believe that you have something the world needs and understand that it's OK to be the first one. I can send you the link. I'm glad you liked it. <laughs> we had a long debate whether I should use that or not. I was like, I'm up there for 45 minutes. I need something. Uh, so standing out like the dancing guy and creating a new category requires a bold brand purpose. So like, several months ago, uh, we hired Lippincott. We did a lot of interviews and decided on Lippincott. Um, and we wanted a brand platform that, that sort of perfectly captured sort of who we are today, um, but who we wanted to become in the coming years. And it wasn't our logos or our color. Um, you know, those will, I don't think those will change. Um, but really about it, uh, staking out this ambitious new ground. Um, so here's where we ended. So our purpose at Athena, our new purpose at Athena Health, many of our employees haven't seen this, um, is unleashing our collective potential to transform healthcare. And this idea of unleashing is that we are the enabler, that we will help you. Our collective potential, it's not just about us, it's about everybody. It's your potential as a doctor, it's your potential as a health system. You have things to offer this country. Maybe it's the entrepreneurs who, let's welcome them on. So they can start to contribute, and we can start to increase the pace of innovation and transform healthcare because clearly the, the industry needs changing. And in order to do this, we're committed to three things as a company. First, open up the network. We live in relentless pursuit of open healthcare. We aim to be the platform where patients, providers, partners, data, and services are wholly connected, fueling unparalleled innovation, linear platform companies. Two, we want to multiply our intelligence. We believe the best results come from the insights of all. We bring together knowledge from every interaction, expand it exponentially, and create it where, where and when it needs needed. I can't tell you the perverse incentives that we have in healthcare for companies to actually block data exchange. I'm not going to go too far into it, but basically what sort of our fee for service system has, has done is four or five years ago, you had 40% of the doctors in or 35% of the doctors in this country were employed by a health system. The rest were independent. And what, what health systems did is they went out and they bought doctors. So today, 70% of physicians are owned by health system. And they bought them because they wanted to lock in the referral patterns, right? Primary care doc, you need someone who needs an MRI, you need someone you send it to our specialist, and if they need something else, that specialist sends it to our hospital. Because most health systems make their money in the hospital. And the value prop to some of our, I don't call them competitors, I call them substitutes, is actually, hey, put them on a system of epic proportion, we'll get everybody, we'll have everybody on in this system, and they'll only be able to order to you. And that way you can charge exorbitant rates. There's a health system here, I'm not going to sort of name its name, in, Ma in Massachusetts, you know, you go, you need an MRI, you go to the health system, it's $5,500. Same machine, the Shields MRI, is 2,500 bucks. But it's so hard for a doctor to order from Shields than it is from this health system um, that the doctor just continues to send because that's, where they, that, that's what's on their logo and that's who owns them. And that's just wrong. And then lastly, free people to do what matters. We believe healthcare is human care. We strive to remove the friction from the healthcare experience, liberating us all to perform in our highest purpose. And this can, be, this can be relevant to our own employees, to providers, to doctors. But we want you to be able to go and strip away all the work, all the unnecessary things that you do, so you can practice 
at, at your highest license. In order to do this, in order to further this brand, we're going to continue in marketing and across our company to focus on three things. One, using our national network and really the data it provides to drive awareness of Athena Health. Two, create light offerings to grow our national network. And three, use insights for our national network to drive engagement. And if I'm successful in doing this, what I hope to see is, is a shift from our paid channels to our own channels. We can reduce the cost of marketing, make us more efficient, but grow the company. So let's start with number one. So at Athena, we track everything, right? We can see everything. Unlike software vendors where they go and they put it on the premise and Epic or Cerner has no idea how their software is being used, right? We have everybody inside of our network. We can see performance. We can track things like administrative vaccine rates, behavioral health rates, for flu outbreaks. Back in 2013, when the government shut down, uh, the government shut down um, there was a lot of nervousness about various government agencies that were needed to sort of run this country. Um, the CDC being one of them, right? So the CDC does many things. One of the things they do is they track disease outbreaks. So what we did is we stepped in in the CDC's place and we started looking and tracking um, the percentage of patient visits that included a diagnostic code for influenza. And the idea is that if, the, if flu started breaking out across the country, we would track it, we would see how it was migrating, we would let our doctors and other doctors and everybody else in the country know, you may need to get know that the flu's coming. Now, luckily, the flu stayed low and everybody was healthy. Um, and we gained national attention for this. Boston Globe, Wall Street Journal, I believe there was a CBS News article, um, all gave us huge uh, kudos for stepping in and, and, and sort of taking the place of the federal government, all because of the knowledge from our national network. But we're not just using this national network to drive awareness around our brand but we're actually dr working to drive positive health outcomes. Uh, another exa so example of this would be when Zika started spreading in the states last year. Less than 24 hours after the CDC announced that everyone living in Miami should be tested for Zika, we ran a query across our patients uh, using CDC's sort of criteria. And we found that um, we identified 1,800 patients being treated by 24 providers across 24 various client, uh, uh, clients that we had. We used our business services, we reached out to these clients, we reached out to these women, we reached out to these men, brought them in, made sure that, they, that the Zika was, hap Zika was happening around them, that they should see their doctor, got them to see their doctor, made sure that all the recent, you know, we don't, we don't do you know, annual, up, you know, annual upgrades, we upgrade weekly, nightly, monthly. So that night we went in, we put in all the CDC codes inside of the EHR, so when the patient showed up, the doctor had exactly what they needed to document. Um, and like the flu, got national attention. This, all of this earned media around Zika um, helped us. We saw, we saw a 23% increase, a year over year, quarter over quarter increase in our branded search, and a 40% year over year increase in our social media engagement. The only thing it cost us was the patient outreach, and we should be doing that anyways because we have directly line incentives with the doctor. We're also using this data to insert ourselves here in Massachusetts. You know, Governor Baker um, uh, made it a, a, a focus of his to try to reduce the amount of opioid prescriptions that are being given out by doctors because most folks who sort of on this, this opioid crisis is they're being given this by their doctor and then they take it for a little while and they can't get off it. Um, and, and uh, kudos for Governor Baker for that initiative. Uh, we went back months later um, and said, are doctors doing it? Are they doing what the governor's asking? Right? We know that if doctors give these opioids out, people get hooked. Um, and we found out that they were, that doctors were, were doing it. They were actually doing the right thing. Um, we used it, sort of our Athena research team used it to sort of on our own site. It was picked up by the Boston Globe, front page story of the Boston Globe. So there's just three ways that we're sort of using our national data to try to separate ourselves from the pack, to get people to understand that there's knowledge that exists from being on this national network. The second thing sort of we're focusing on is, is creating light services to grow our national network. So by definition, platforms thrive exponentially based on how many people join the network. Now, it's taken us 20 years to get 13% of sort of the, the, the patients 
and, and, or the doctors onto the network. So we're looking at ways, creative ways, that we can use light offerings to, ex to, 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 to make that adoption faster, to start to get folks to sort of join in lighter ways. They don't have to rip out their practice management system. They don't have to rip out their EHR. Um, we bought a company, Hippocrates. Uh, for those of you who don't know Hippocrates, is actually the widest, uh, the, the, the most um, widely used drug lookup app in the country. R widely used doctor's app in the, com in the country. But 300,000 doctors going in and out of Hippocrates regularly just to sort of type in a drug and, and see what that drug is and how much they should pres prescribe. And what we're doing is we're thinking about ways, how can we extend Hippocrates? How can we extend the experience? How can we get them, how can we get every single doctor to just do little things like just tell us who you are, tell us your specialty, and identify yourself inside of our national physician directory. Once we have that and once we know who the doctor is and we've built an integration, because remember, when we interface with a piece of software, everybody else on our 100,000 doctors can share that interface. So if we interface maybe to their EHR, we'll start to publish their schedule. If they have a patient that are seeing a patient that we have on Athena Health, we'll show that patient face sheet so they can see all the patient information that they have. They can start to feel and, and, and get a sense of our network through these light services to get them to want to do more. And everything they do, we can see and we can learn from. And that's what helps us grow the network at a much faster pace than we've done today. Secondly, so I think of two-sided markets, we're going and reaching out to the patient. If you remember health, Microsoft Health Vault, it failed dramatically. It's because it didn't, it just, it, it gave the, the patient information, but didn't allow them to do anything. They couldn't text their doctor, they, they, reading their information. They couldn't schedule into their doctor's EHR, right? They couldn't ask questions. They couldn't do anything. They could just kind of read things they probably already knew. So what we're doing is, is launching uh, a patient portal that actually though, connects, them, connects every single patient to their doctor. So they can exchange information, they can ask questions, they can do follow-up, they want to schedule, they can schedule directly into the, 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 uh, the doctor's schedule. And this is a big shift for us as a company, as a marketing organization, because today we're, you know, all of our business, we sell to healthcare providers and, and health systems, uh, we're predominantly B2B. So this would, we're actually now having to think of how we would need to pivot and, and be, all, you know, be a B2B to seed company as well. And lastly, um, we're looking at ways and how we can improve the buyer's journey using our insights. So on our website, for example, uh, we have a project that's underway. Um, so when a prospect, remember, no one is, you know, th th there's very little folks who are in market and interested, right? So instead of coming to our website and seeing you know, a list of our services and all of our business claims and performance claims that we want, a doctor can maybe just find themselves on the network. Enter in your name, your name of your practice, and show them how they're already connected. Hey, we know that you, Dr. Costin, are at Providence Medical Group, and you've got 30 providers. You currently today already have 62 direct connections into Athena Health. You're sharing patients. Offer up names. And if you were on the network today, you would be able to clinically exchange information just by getting on with all those other doctors that you're currently doing business with that you're sending referrals with seamlessly. And hopefully what this does is that while they may not be in market and interested for a piece of software, it starts to educate them, it starts to tease them about what it would like to be on our network. In the era of meaningful use, when everybody was in market interested, we also used to sort of just, anybody who sort of touched us in any way, who touched that website, we would literally have an ISA or an SE call them immediately for a meeting. So redesigning the buyer's journey. It, 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 and the idea behind that was it didn't really sort of, you, 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 the, the, the lifetime value of a customer was so high, you were willing to spend more to reach out because so many people were already in market. But over time, as more people adopted, this led to a, a higher cost of booking that we were comfortable with. So today, we're responding um, by actually doing things that many of you probably already do today, right? Lead scoring, engagement scoring, right? Maybe if they go to our website, they don't get a call from their ISA, 
um, but they get a piece of content, a piece of data from our network. And to work them up, to educate them about our national network to a place we feel like they're engaged enough to then have a phone conversation with one of our inside sales agents. And when an inside sales agent or an SE does speak to them, they're not calling them and pitching them on our red cycle business. They're having that same conversation that the, 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 the prospect probably started on our website. How many connections do you have? How many referrals are you getting? How many patients do we share? Here's other doctors that, that you may know that you went to school with that are on Athena. You should call and ask them what they think of us. And then lastly, um, if they're willing, what could your performance be on our network? So this is our revenue calculator. The SE may send this to them, and they may walk this through with them and ask them to identify themselves, the organization's name. Sorry, it's a little slow. How many physicians do they have? What kind of specialty do they have? What's their cost of collections? Days in AR. Basic information that every doctor, especially if they're independent, knows. How many patients do they see? And then boom, let us compare you against all of the, it's actually, it's a little old, the 100,000 physicians that are already on our network. How do cardiologists just like you perform on Athena Health? Here's where you sit. And more importantly, here's what you could do. Here's how much money available to you if you're able to increase performance and move just one quartile over. Here's the average performance. And here's what you could do, tips you could do to drive performance inside of your practice. These are insights only we have because we can see performance. We have everybody on a network. So if we can use this data and use this insight, my hope is that we can begin to sort of educate the world that there is an alternative to on-premise software. There's an alternative to that not only is going to increase and, 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 and make healthcare better in the United States, but help these doctors both thrive and survive. So I've talked a lot today. Um, I just want to leave you with this image. And this is a painting done by Luke Fields. And what strikes me here is the doctor's attention and focus on this per, per, poor girl who needs help. He's not focused on his computer. He's not focused on his EHR. EH. He's not asking her qu annoying questions that he should already know. He's doing everything in his power and his training. He's practicing at the top of his license to, cu to cure her. And what we're trying to do at Athena Health is to restore this moment, both for the doctor and the patient, to take away all the necessary work, to give her all the information she needs, in order to unlock her potential, unleash her potential, so patients get what they need. Essentially, restoring humanity back to healthcare. It's a big vision, it's a big mission, but we think we're up for it. Thank you. Thank you.